In today's video, we're going to take a look at how real estate commissions have changed in the state of Utah in 2024 to give you an idea of how this affects you as a seller and as a buyer. My name is Elizabeth Prisby. I'm with Stratum Real Estate Group. If you are looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Cedar City, Utah, or really anywhere in Southern Utah, I would love to help you out with that. Please feel free to call, text, or email anytime. My contact information is down below in the description. Now, I know this is a little bit different video than I typically do on this channel. However, we have had had some recent changes in the real estate industry lately, and I want to help you understand how they are being addressed here in Utah and how this will affect you moving forward. Now, this was a national change. However, each state is addressing it differently as each state is starting in a different place. However, in my opinion, I feel the state of Utah was always doing things great, and so we really were in the best possible position to take on these new changes. So the first thing I want to do before we jump into these changes, how things were and how they will be moving forward, I want to take a look at a few common misconceptions that people typically have when they are looking to buy or sell real estate. The first one is the misconception that you have to use a realtor. You do not. Like anything, you can be a do-it-yourselfer. You can decide to sell that home on your own. It's called for sale by owner. Or you can decide to purchase that home not being represented by a realtor. Like anything, when you hire a real estate agent, you are paying for that expertise. You are paying for someone that does this day in, day out. They can help you through a smooth transaction. Any of us at any time can go put our house up for sale or can go purchase a home and not have to use a realtor. That's our choice. It's like if I wanted to go tile my own shower. I could do that. I could probably find a video that's going to teach me how to do it, tell me everything that I need to get, and I can go in there and take care of it. But I can tell you right now, it's going to take me a whole lot longer than it would somebody that does this every single day. It's going to cause me quite a bit of headache because I'll be questioning myself at every turn. It's going to take me quite a bit longer and it's not going to look as good as somebody that lays tile every single day. And this can be said for putting on a roof, landscaping your front yard, changing your oil. It really can go into anything. We have a whole world of do-it-yourselfers, so you can absolutely sell your home or purchase a home on your own. You do not have to use a realtor. Now, it's important that I mention this before we dive into this so that you know you don't have to use an agent at all. It is completely up to you. Of course, I'm gonna go over why you are going to want to use an agent, but again, you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to believe me. You can try and go it on your own. Absolutely, it is your choice. Now, the second common misconception, and there's plenty, but I wanted to address these two. But the second one I want to address is that sellers don't have to pay the buyer's agent anymore. Well, I'm here to tell you, sellers haven't been paying the buyer's agent. I'll show you what I mean by this when we break down how it used to be and how it will be moving forward for the time being. It's midway through 2024, so this is what it will be as of now. But in the past, sellers have not been paying the buyer's agent unless that was negotiated into the contract. So as we go through these slides, we're going to go over what one of the big changes was from this National Association of Realtors settlement that has gone into effect as of August 17th, 2024. Essentially, what has happened is commissions are now being decoupled. So if you think of coupling, you're a couple, you're attached together. Well, now the commissions are being decoupled, meaning the the seller's commission will be separate from the buyer's commission. That may not make sense, but we're going to go into some graphics to kind of help you understand how it was and how it will be moving forward. So that's the big one. With that decoupling, real estate agents are no longer able to advertise what a buyer broker's commission will be in the MLS. Again, we're going to dive into that a little bit deeper, but that's kind of a broad picture of two of the large things that came out of this settlement. So here's why Utah has been in a better position than a lot of the states. And that is because we have always had an exclusive right to sell listing agreement and agency disclosure with our sellers. So if I am going in to list your home and be your agent as a seller, then you would be signing one of these agreements with me as your agent. We have also always had an exclusive buyer brokerage agreement and agency disclosure. So if I am going to represent you as a buyer, 
I would have also had you go in and sign one of these before I start representing you. One of the big things that came out of this settlement is that you must have some sort of agreement in writing with an agent before they can show you homes. In Utah, we have always had this and I always get this signed with my buyers prior to taking them out to see a home. So we really were in a great position. However, we did have to make a few small changes to both of these agreements with the change that happened on August 17th so that we could meet those guidelines. So we're going to take a look at what changes happened in the seller agreement. Then we'll go take a look at what changes happened in the buyer agreement. So we're going to take a look at what it was first, and then we'll take a look at what it is now to give you an idea of where those changes are. So this is section two out of the exclusive right to sell listing agreement and agency disclosure that I would sign with you as a seller to list your home. This is what it was. So the way that this was done before is I would negotiate with you what my brokerage fee would be in order to list your home. This could have been a flat fee or it could have been a percentage of the sell price of your home. Now from here, there's another section at the bottom that says additionally, the seller has negotiated with and authorized the company to share a portion of the brokerage fee. So see that word there, share. So you are authorizing me as a seller to share a portion of this commission that I have already negotiated with you with a buyer's agent and advertise it on the multiple listing service or in the MLS. So let's go down to this again. Additionally, the seller has negotiated with and authorized the company to share a portion of the brokerage fee as advertised on the multiple listing service or the MLS with another brokerage participating in any transaction arising out of this listing agreement. The company shall offer buyer brokerage compensation on the MLS of blank or blank. Again, it could be a flat fee or a percentage of the acquisition price. It's also important to note that we have always had in our agreement that the brokerage fees are not set by any board or association of realtors or any MLS or in any manner other than between the company and the seller. So this is what it was. And I'll give you kind of a visual of this, okay? So you are the seller, you negotiate with and pay the seller's brokerage or the agent. So anytime you go into an agreement with an agent, you're actually going into contract with their brokerage. So the way that it used to be then, and I put this on here so it wouldn't be confused, is you as the seller would negotiate with me as an agent and my brokerage, what that fee was going to be. Now within that, you've also authorized me to share a portion of that with a buyer's agent or with the buyer's broker. So when we go back to sellers have never paid the buyer's agent, they haven't, not in the state of Utah. I don't know how it's been other places, but we have always negotiated with the seller as a listing agent, and then we have chosen to split that with an agent that brings us a buyer. Now, if we as agents are willing to split our commission with an agent that brings us a buyer, that right there should be an indication of why buyer's agents are important, but we're gonna go on. We're still gonna dive into this a little bit deeper. So now this is the one that we currently have. You can see it's slightly longer and it's adjusted just a little bit. They have taken out any language regarding the MLS because it has been decoupled. We can no longer put that compensation into the MLS. So again, we still have the seller's brokerage fee where you negotiate with me as your listing agent, whether it's going to be a flat fee or a percentage of the acquisition price. But if you come down to 2.2, this is where it talks talks about authorizing us as agents to offer compensation to the buyer's brokerage. So let's read this. It says the company is authorized to advertise or otherwise communicate that the seller and or company is offering to pay compensation to a buyer's brokerage in an amount up to, again, flat fee or percentage of the gross acquisition price. Again, in bold letters, it states, this is fully negotiable. It's not set by law, by any board of or association of realtors, or by any multiple listing service. Okay. So now it's still in there. You can still choose to pay for the buyer's agent as a seller. It's just separate from your listing agent, meaning you can negotiate your listing agent's fee, and then you can decide separately what you're willing to offer a buyer's agent. So let me show you what that looks like and how the image is different. You as a seller will negotiate and pay your seller's broker or agent. And then you as a seller will offer 
and can potentially pay a buyer's broker or their agent. So when I say broker or their agent, you are actually paying the brokerage. The brokerage takes their cut of that and then it goes to the agent, whether it's the seller's broker or the buyer's broker, that's how it is paid out. So you can see the difference. It went to your agent and then your agent paid a portion of what they negotiated to the buyer's agent. Now, you do not have to offer a buyer's agent compensation. So you could just pay your listing agent and just say, no, I'm not taking on that fee. I'm not going to do that. But I can tell you there are reasons that you're going to want to look at before you make a decision on whether or not you're going to offer compensation to a buyer's agent. So let's take a look at a few of these reasons. The first one is buyer representation. You as the seller want that buyer to be represented. You want the liability off of you and you want to know that they have someone representing them that is going to make sure all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted and that they can't come back to you later and say, well, we didn't know about this or hold you accountable because you weren't sharing everything up front. You might say, well, I have my listing agent and they can handle all of this. That brings up another thought. Your agent is loyal to you. Your agent works for you, meaning they are representing you. Now your agent can choose to also represent the buyer under limited agency, meaning their duties are limited to both you as the seller and the buyer. However, that agent is going to expect compensation for also representing the buyer because they are taking on a second liability. So be aware of that, that you do want the buyer represented so that liability does not come back on you. The second reason why you might want to offer this is you are going to get more exposure. I have already heard of buyers telling their buyer's agent that, hey, we don't really want to see any homes that aren't going to cover our fees, so can you just find out if that seller is offering anything and we're gonna take it off the list. This is happening, I've been seeing it happen, so be aware of that. When you are listing with an agent, you want maximum exposure, so why tie your hands behind your back before you even get started? The third reason is you are going to get serious buyers, meaning they have looked for proof of funds, they have looked to make sure that the buyer's been pre-approved, that they are on track to possibly sell their home if they're coming in with a contingent offer. You are going to get more serious buyers when they have already been vetted by a buyer's agent. And then the last reason here is going to be a smoother transaction. When you are working with a buyer that is being guided by a professional, then just like laying the tile in my shower, it's going to go a lot smoother. They're going to make sure that inspections are done on time, that appraisals are done on time, that they are taking care of whatever documents are needed to ensure that their loan is underwritten in time to purchase your home. So you definitely want your buyer represented. Now you might be saying, hey, this is easy for you to say. You're a realtor, of course you want to get paid. I have sold multiple properties of my own and every time I haven't even questioned whether or not I'm going to offer a buyer's agent to bring me a buyer. I will absolutely do that. I will continue to do that because of all of these reasons that I just listed right here. I want maximum exposure. I want that buyer represented. I don't want the liability on myself. So that is why for me personally, I will always offer a buyer's agent compensation on my personal properties that I'm going to sell. Now set all that aside. I want you to also think about where the buyer's coming from. The buyer is taking care of their down payment. They're taking care of their closing costs. They're taking care of any moving costs that they have. They are working to get in on that loan. If one more fee is added to make sure that they have adequate representation, how likely are they going to be to be able to purchase that home in the long run? So again, you do not have to pay a buyer's agent. You do not even have to list with a realtor, but I want you to be aware of all of these things so that you understand how this looks from all sides. So now that we've kind of taken a deep dive into the seller's agreement, let's go over and take a look at the buyer's agreement, what it was and what it is now. So again, this is section two. However, this is from the exclusive buyer brokerage agreement and agency disclosure. So this is what I would sign with a buyer. However, this is what it used to be. So we're going to take a look at what it was then, and then we'll take a look at what it is now so you can see the changes. Again, I feel like Utah was in a really great place for this, and we had some really good agreements and forms already in place that this really didn't affect us too much. So you can see in 2.1, we go over the brokerage fee, meaning if I'm representing you as a buyer, I'm not waiting to see what the listing agent is going to offer me. I'm negotiating with you right up front what my fee is 
is as an agent to represent you. If you're here, you know I work hard. You know I'm constantly researching and I'm in the thick of it and I'm going above and beyond to help my clients. So yes, I absolutely believe I deserve to get compensated as an agent. You obviously see the value in having an agent if you are coming to me. So that's the first thing that I wanna get out there. But what I wanna show you is that with this brokerage fee, it can either be a flat fee or it can be a percentage of the acquisition price of the property. Then in section 2.2, this is what it was. It talks about satisfaction of brokerage fee by a third party. So it says if the property acquired by the buyer is listed with a brokerage on a multiple listing service or the MLS, the buyer brokerage compensation or the BBC paid to the company by the listing brokerage shall satisfy the buyer's obligation for the brokerage fee shown above provided that the BBC is equal to or more than the amount shown above. In the event the BBC is less than the brokerage fee or any compensation offered by the listing brokerage or property owner to the company is less than the brokerage fee, the buyer may negotiate with the property owner and or listing brokerage to satisfy the buyer's remaining obligation to pay the brokerage fee and the buyer shall pay any remaining difference at closing. Then again in section 2.3 it talks about it not being set by any board or association of realtors or any MLS and that it's only set between the company and the buyer. So this is what it was. I want to give you a picture of how it was so you can see things really haven't changed that much in Utah. But let's give you a visual so that you can get a clear understanding. So you as a buyer would negotiate your broker fee with the buyer's broker or agent and then that was typically getting paid by the listing broker and we could look at that BBC or buyer broker compensation in the MLS. So your fee most of the time was being satisfied by a third party. Then if there was any remaining balance, then you as the buyer would pay the rest of it. So for example, let's say the broker fee was 3%. Let's say that the listing broker was offering 2.5% of the acquisition price. Then that additional half percent, you still were making up as a buyer because you already went into an agreement for 3% on that. Again, those amounts are negotiable, could be a flat fee, could be a percentage, but this is how it used to be. Now let's take a look at the changing. Notice we still have three sections. We have 2.1 that talks about the brokerage fee, 2.2 that talks about satisfaction of brokerage fee by a third party, and then 2.3 that goes over when it is due and payable. So again, this is the new section two of the brokerage agreement for Utah. You can either be charged a flat fee or you can be charged a percentage of the gross acquisition price of the property. That hasn't changed. What has changed is section 2.2 where any mention of the MLS has been taken out. So it now says if a seller's brokerage and or the property owner is compensating the company on a property acquired by the buyer, then the compensation paid to the company by the seller's brokerage and or the property owner shall satisfy the buyer's obligation for the brokerage fee shown above provided that the compensation is equal to the brokerage fee. The company may not accept total compensation from any source that is greater than the brokerage fee. In the event the compensation paid by the seller's brokerage and or the property owner is less than the brokerage fee, the buyer shall pay any remaining difference at closing. Okay, so let's get look at a graphic again. We still have you as a buyer negotiating the broker fee with the brokerage or your buyer's agent. Payment can still come from a third party, only this time it's coming from the seller, not the listing brokerage through the MLS. And then any remaining balance is still going to be covered by you as a buyer. Now where it gets a little tricky here is what the seller is offering is no longer transparent because it is not listed in the MLS, which means we together have to go to each listing agent and ask them, hey, has the seller authorized you to offer a buyer's agent compensation on this property? You can decide if you want this done beforehand, you can decide if you want this done after, but this will give you an idea when you are writing an offer of how we need to write that offer. So let's say the seller does not offer anything, that means 
that you as the buyer are covering that full broker fee. Now, it doesn't mean that we still can ask the seller to pay for that when we go in and write an offer up. There is a section in our new contract that allows for you as the buyer to ask the seller to pay for your buyer's agent fee. It is written in there and we can put it into the terms. If the seller has already authorized the listing agent to advertise what they are willing to pay a buyer's agent, then we will do that on a separate form ahead of time and keep it separate from your offer. But I want you to understand that there are options here for you. However, maybe you're hung up on the fact that, hey, the seller might not cover any of this and I might be responsible. Maybe I don't actually want a buyer's agent. Maybe I want to go directly to the seller or the listing agent. So what I want to do is I want to go over reasons why buyers should have buyer representation. The first one being is the agency that you receive. When you sign that buyer brokerage agreement and agency disclosure, we actually owe you loyalty, obedience, full disclosure, confidentiality, reasonable care, and any other duties required by law. Meaning we have a fiduciary duty to you and we hold your best interest in mind. The second reason why you're definitely going to want buyer representation is that we have local market expertise. We are watching the market. We are making sure that you're not overpaying for that home. The third reason is we have negotiating skills. This is our profession. This is our expertise. This is what we are doing day in and day out. We have been trained to negotiate with other agents and find a solution that will work with all parties and make this process a smooth one. And then lastly, we are going to guide you through the entire process, meaning we are going to make sure that your earnest money is secure, that you don't miss any of the dates or deadlines, that you are getting the inspections and the title commitment and the CCNRs and any HOA dues that may be due. We're making sure that we're watching your financing and appraisal deadline and just moving you through the process as smoothly as possible because let's face it, you have other things that you're concerned about. You're packing up from wherever it is that you're coming from to come here. You're working on getting the documents together needed to finance your loan. You likely have your own jobs that you are professionals in that you are trying to take care of. So as buyer's agents, we are helping you through the process to make sure that nothing is missed. All right, that was a pretty brief overview of what the changes have been as far as real estate commissions go in the state of Utah, from what they were to what they are now, and really how minimal those were in Utah, because Utah's forms and contracts and agreements really were set up to protect both the buyer and the seller, and so it was really just a minor change. Of course, if you have any questions regarding this, I would love to help you out with that, so please feel free to reach out. Remember, my name is Elizabeth Prisby. I'm with Stratum Real Estate Group. Whether you're looking to buy a home here, sell a home here, or you're just trying to decide if Cedar City or Southern Utah is the right place for you, I would really love to help you out, answer any questions that you might have. So please don't hesitate to contact me. I promise you I will respond. All right, until next time, have a wonderful day. 